this is the biggest headline gig we've ever done out of that event. Yeah. 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 You know people do get very like slack on tour and get lazy. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, I fucking love it. What, are you sure you want to be the filmmaker as well as YouTube? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I've always done films, like, from when I was really young, and so it's a really chance to kind of get back into it a bit. Yeah, well, it's natural, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I think it should be great. No way, just go on bed, leave us alone, leave us alone. I've got this for you, right? Yeah, I've just done that, mate. So it's good, I can use it, it's cut it's good smoke the smoke. Yeah, so suddenly you can be here, then smoke, and then another scene. Back here. Ah, <laughs> smoke scene. Smoke scene. Smoke screen. Smoke screen. Smoke, 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 smoke screen. Alright, alright, all right, all right, you made your enough, mate. Uh, so, 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 hold on, hold on. Come here, hold on. So, go, I want each of you to do, to blow into the thing, yeah? Okay, ready? Yeah. Okay, a wicked little point. <laughs> Very special guest in the studio today in town. We're very lucky to have Blaine, Kai, and William from the wonderful Mr. Jets. How is the two going, guys? Well, this is the third gig tonight, so it kind of it's just at the early stages of it, really. It's cool. We're pretty excited because um, on a lot of the dates we've got our, our friends as support bands, and it's it's a it's a pretty long tour. When I mean, you're going on tour for five weeks, you need you need stuff just to keep you you know keep you going and, and keep give you fresh yeah keep it fresh mm. and give you energy and stuff and having your friends coming up every you know three or four days is a really good way to do that because at the end of the day people are paying like five quid or ten quid to see you and like it's really about how far can you take it in a way rather than having shit bands that you feel like you can outplay whatever it's not really about that but when you've got a you know a great band on tour with you like the noise that's it's kind of it really keeps you on your toes and I think that's what this tour is about it's about 
about bands that are really feeding off each other, not not we should just picking each other because they're a good opener or they're a good second on. It's about bands which actually get you going, bands which you feel Challenge the challenges at the same yeah, time. Yeah, exactly. I met Will at the Mother Bar. He talked a lot about music and um, I think he chats about music and that. And he said that he had a band called Mr. Jackson. Didn't get to see them for a bit, but saw them at Met Metro. And that was um, that was a really cool gig. The first time we saw them, it was just like um, that chaotic splendour of their kind of prog escapades and that. And we were like, this band is fucking amazing. And then they invited us down to Eel Pie. <laughs> Anyone coming for a curry? Ah, uh, yes! Oh, I'm going now. Ow! ow. Well, well, Henry, tell me in 10 seconds, why, what are, what, what's happening? Why, where are we? What, why are we here? We're in Northampton, right? Which is the first gig on the tour. What's the tour? I need an introduction here to this, to this tour. I need some introductory okay, stuff. What's happening? This tour is the Learn Slashers final tour. The Seal Fire Review Tour. Yes, yes, yes. This is what people want. They want this. That's what they want. They want this. That's what they want. That's what give them what they want, eh? What? Don't worry. I don't have a problem with it. So uh, this is and this is Northampton. This is this um, reputable town up in the Midlands, and it's um, famous for. There's Lyman. Des no, 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 Des O'Connor. Who's, Des O'Connor. Who's it famous for? Can I get a bit of this? Des, it's camera. famous no. for Des O'Connor and shoe wear, like start What, like these amazing start pieces right, of footwear that I had brandished before? Those appalling yeah. shoes that you wear yeah. there. Oh, they're just beautiful. They look, at mine, beautiful. look at mine, look at mine, look at mine, right? And ho hopefully it's the home for a late night curry. And um, but it was a good gig. Oh, fucking um, crap gig. <laughs> Well, it, was a good gig. it was a great it was good gig. gig. It was a bit rusty. Let, we'll we'll, we'll, up a few we'll, times. We'll, we'll, um, we'll tell ourselves that. We'll rock ourselves to sleep believing it was a good gig. It was a good gig. The matter time. of the fact that all the little the girlies the there are Paddington's fans. Right? And that we cannot look look past that, I feel. Yeah. I don't think Will scored, I think that's probably <laughs> <laughs> Get away. Get away from me. Get away. So there we are. I, I think the home ball. truths have been said. So. <laughs> I'm gonna slash like a powerful horse. <laughs> so apart from that, I think it was a great gig. Um, we bonded well. Larrick and Love were amazing. <laughs> I'm Carlos from Love. Hello, I'm Miko and here's my crib. On tour, the most important thing that you really want is orange. Orange. You can use the skin as clothes, wipe your ass with it if you're in one of those sticky situations, which always do happen on tour. How did you find that, man? I really enjoyed it, actually. Yeah, that was that was a good one. Northampton was a bit dry, but Leeds is a very very nice place. <laughs> the nice one when you know a crowd shit at the start, and then they start getting going. And it's good in there. It's a good in there. Yeah, get me in a good light, man. Get the light. No, it's probably my. No, it's good. Go that it's good. Go that side. That's my better side for luck. I found the crowd a little bit unresponsive, but I don't know, I don't know. I think we won them over in the end. But like, it was good. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. It was great. All the, all the better when you lot will be getting on stage, too, the truth. Oh, I feel fucking wicked with the fucking guy. You're wearing eyeliner. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Lipstick.
Jamie Toots. Yeah. She knows that when I'm in a cellar, it gets pulled all over her fella. Because she says, man, he ain't no better. And then the next man kicking off boss, jump, she stumbles down by a river. She screams, calling on the I love the mystery bits. I could talk about them all day. There was a boy who ran away from what he didn't know. Who he wouldn't say he just. One of the best things about going on tour is it is a lifestyle and it's a lifestyle that we've always wanted, you know, just like, never, you know, you're a stranger wherever you go and there's a real freshness to that, just hopping out of a van. What do I love? What do I love? I love playing, I, play, I love playing music with the band, that is what it's all about. I love playing live, I love performing, I love making films, I love writing scripts, I love directing, I love acting. Um, Drums, a family. I love this shirt that I bought. My trainers. I love these trainers. I've had these trainers for about two years. Music. <laughs> yeah, music. Almost forgot that one. Yeah, what don't I love? What don't I love? I love fiddling with everything. I love everyone. God bless everyone. God bless us all. I love music. I love um, books. And I love art. And I love looking at paintings. And I love meeting people. And I love it when there's a difficult time ahead, but like, you know, we've got to go and do a tour or whatever, but it's only us that can pull it off you know, and do it together, you know. I love certain sounds as much as I love, like, physical things, actually, and I mean that. When I was at school and um, we used to have music lessons, there was always this hum of someone mowing the, the school lawns outside and you could only just hear it, but just that quiet thing. And it was the sound of summer just creeping up, you know, and like escaping school. My first instrument was, I think, the harmonium. It's an Indian instrument. And then it was like tabla and like keyboards and stuff like that. I was, uh, yeah, I've always wanted to be in bands. I was in a band from the age of about 16. So to me, it was, it was like, it was something that I always wanted to do. And you talk to many adults and they say, oh yeah, I was in a band when I was a kid and then I threw it up, I threw it in. And um, they, you can see they regret it because they, you know, it's something that they valued a lot. Um, and music making is something you can do at any age. I haven't underestimated the importance of that. India's an amazing country. You got like, you got like, you have everything. Uh, when I go to India, it's like ah, it makes sense now. Things make sense. Things are like the way you do things and the way you are, and like everything just seems more natural. Obviously, because you're from that country. So um, it's and there's something really mysterious about it. You come back changed. It's kind of refreshing to come back. It puts you like it makes you focused. I think I speak French. Yeah, it's my other language. I've dreamt in French. That was weird. <laughs> they say when you dream in a language, you're truly bilingual. So I hope, I hope it, it's true. I hope I really am bilingual. 
j'espère que je suis bilingue. Alors, beautiful countries like Morocco and, and the Middle East and beautiful cultures like the Arab culture and, and European cultures. I think that's what it's all about. I think the West has lost a lot of uh, a lot of beauty. You know, traveling it opens your eyes to a lot of things. Travel should be a main thing in everyone's life, traveling. That's what I love. Grew up in Shepherd's Bush. I went to nursery school there called the Busy Bee. That's where I met Blaine. And we used to cause havoc on the streets. We would be like, we were like the living version of the Bash Street kids. Bash, Bash Street kids. I moved to France for three years when my parents separated. Where me and Will started writing to each other and formed the band. So you could, you could say that the band really took shape when the three of us were together. And the three or four year period when Blame was in France. You know, the, 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 the foundations were made for the band. It was a very weird experience for me being in school. It was a nautical school, you see, so it was very, like, everyone wore military costumes every day, like berets and, like, woolly jumpers with epaulettes and gold bits and stuff. And everyone had to march three times a week. So instantly, you know, I was made an outcast without even wanting to be. I couldn't get involved with that. I walk on my hands, you know, they're like, I actually walk around like that all day. Have you seen that video of, like, freaks? Freaks of the Earth. I'm one of them, actually. They left me out of the final car. I auditioned, they didn't let me in. I walk around on my hands. Yeah, that's why I'm sitting at a table, because there's nothing below. This, you know, doctors these days, they can match colour skin, you know. It's not quite right, they didn't quite match my skin very well, but, you know, pretty close. This is a bit more orange, this is a bit more pink. But, you know, like, I didn't complain, I could have, could have sued, but I thought, no, you know, I'm not paid very much. I'm doing their best. I remember the first time I hung up on a friend, like I hung up the phone, because I'd, I'd just been watching like some American film on the TV, and like this kid was like going, yeah, whatever, man, and hanging up on his friend. And I remember I called Blaine, and I got in an argument on him with him on purpose, and I was like, hey, and then I just said, yeah, well, whatever, and I hung up the phone. And I just felt like such a cool dude. And then he called me back, and I just said, yeah, whatever, and I hung up again. I really got a memory of that. And then all of this, you know, this is all mechanical, and you can actually hear it. Listen. Listen. Do you know what I mean? The other one's... The other one's a bit more creaky. You know, I started to come to London. Me and Will started to come to London loads when we were sort of 16, 17. You know, we'd come down, we'd say, like, let's meet at, let's meet at Paddington Station and we'll, like... We'll meet up with Kai and we go out with Kai and Kai would show us a different part of London. Like we'd discover like, I don't know, like Shoreditch one day. We'd be like, oh my God, yeah, look at this. Everyone around here is so cool. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what it's like when you first go to places and we're like, oh, let's go to like, let's go to Notting Hill wine bars this weekend and we'll, you know, we'll eat like garlic bread. I was in a few other bands. I just didn't like any of them. They were just really shit. And my drum teacher was just like, um, just they contacted my drum teacher because they needed a drummer. And he's like one of the top drum teachers. And so um, he just he just gave me the number and I phoned Blaine and Blaine was telling me about he rehearses on this island and his dad's got some space on this island and rehearses there blah, blah, blah. so I went and met up with him and we started playing and there was something special there like straight away. There was a boy right away from what he did go, who he would say he just
And we, we met you back a year ago on the block right. party tour. That's right. What's your, what's your favourite thing about um, Hull? About Hull? Um, uh, 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 there's not main things that really, really makes it lots of spacious. We're in Hull. And it's a bit horrible, really. But we're in the university. There's lots of students about the place. It's quite nice. People are not really nice customers. And we've, got, we've had really nice friendships in here. The That's people true. I met in Hull were lovely. The people who queued outside our van made my, made my night. Wow. The people of Hull made my night. So how long are you going to be here then? Just, just this evening really. Mm. Just for a gig, so... <laughs> oh, Hull's <laughs> awesome. Hull's fine. <laughs> Hull's good. I mean, we could edit the bit about mm. four mm. dead bodies a week. <laughs> you right? My name's Richard Arms. I play bass guitar <laughs> for uh, Dr. Phil. Hello, I am uh, I'm Benedict Morgan. Has, Ray, the, has the camera met George? Yeah. We're in Darlington. And we're having a shisha, mate. Do you think you look good on the dance floor? If I'm listening to some fun music, then I'll dance a fun dance. If I'm listening to some heavy, heavy, nice music, I'll get down and get heavy. I don't think it's a metaphor for anything. I just think it's just a playground of, <laughs> playground of movement. <laughs> be better playing music with some of my best friends and exactly. going on fucking tour in places I've never been before you know what I mean Look, we invited you here so be grateful now give me some of that give me some of what <laughs> give me some of what <coughs> how are you Going good. Got really stoned last night. All right. Can we go over to the semi-finalists? Yes. My name is Ferry, and that is Adriana. <laughs> Sweaty. I think whenever all my clothes are completely stuck to my body and I have to like peel them off with like a paint scraper. Yeah, that's when you know. That's when you know it's good. We played in the hall about four times and but the last couple of times it was the same venue and it was it was ever like empty. It was like 20 people. And then to come back last night and it was the absolute round and it's like, wow, this is great. Now into normally the I feel fucked. Right. Huh? I feel so fucked. I feel so tired. My head is banging. For three days, my head's been hurting. I've been sleeping in a bunk, yeah, where I can't even. I can't even roll over. <laughs> I want to go home. That's how much it's hurting. It's killing me. I just want to go home. Have you enjoyed the gigs? Yeah, no. The gigs are amazing. Yesterday was amazing. Uh, how many people? 200 people? Yeah. Serious. That's amazing. 200 people giving you a lot of love. That's, that's powerful shit. is like our second home, you know, it's playing, you know, went to school here locally and it's just fantastic. I'd say like one of the highlights of the tour. So let's hope it carries on like this. It's great. <laughs>
pointing to it. And little children pointing. That's me. That's the flyer. <laughs> Oh, I had a really good time. It was a bit, it was a bit mental. It sounded a bit mental, first gig and all. But uh, it got very it Sonic Youthy towards the end. Really? Yeah. It got very lost the plotty. Yeah, exactly. Did you run the will, yeah. But in a good way. They can't feel my phone. I think this is our last song tonight. It's a story about a, a boy who falls in love with uh, a girl who is once a boy and then becomes a girl who doesn't want it. The story's set in the 50s and so. About a cabaret dancer who's a transsexual. Yeah, it's, it's about a tranny. And she takes the stage and, like, you know, every week these kind of businessmen come in after hours and they sort of watch her. He falls in love with her, but in order for them to go out, he has to have his. Doodah, locked off. But. Sound-wise, yeah, we wrote it as a Smith's pastiche. Then we, we brought it to the band, and um, they were like, man, we want to play fucking Smith's pastiche. The, the drum beat in the chorus I got from, like, a bangra. It's like a bangra drum beat, like... We, we, we're quite shattered. We appear to be quite shambolic uh, when we perform, because we use a collection of somewhat diverse DIY yeah. style Pops instrumentation. <laughs> um, it shows our origins. It's like... We, we put things together and just bang them and make music, basically. So we, and, and then the songs appear to be constructed in the same way, like bolted together out of different funny bits of music. There was a book written in the 80s called Tape Delay, and it was, it was kind of a summary of, of the whole underground 80s scene, and it looked at bands like Sonic Youth, um, Test Department. One of the bands was called, um, this is a German word, Einsturz und Neubauten, which means collapsing new buildings, and they they created lots of their music on, on, on objects that they just found around the house and, and in fact they actually squatted so they, they pretty much lived in industrial spaces so they made lots of rhythms and lots of sort of, they found lots of tunings from hitting springs and hitting you know sort of vices and just scrap metal really and that, that really made me think. Like, you know, basically I just thought you know why not, why not extend sort of the rhythm section to like hitting dustbins and like smacking the start was just like smacking trays against walls and stuff psychedelic prog kids with a father to boot I just don't think that they're, they're putting us in the correct box maybe if they put us in that box three years ago or even two years ago or a year and a half ago then then i'll say yeah yeah prog rock yeah I don't think you could take one of our songs and say that's a prog rock song. Yeah, sure. I don't think you could do that anymore. Like, definitely on some of our older stuff, but... Maybe comparing us to bands like The Coral and Dexy's Midnight Runners is probably more accurate. And Talking Heads as well, like, that's something my friend said the other day. I mean, they're, they're very much putting that sort of post-punk bracket, but they've got an album called Remain in Light, and it, it's all to do with um, um, a book written about polyrhythms. And polyrhythms are like... If you take like a bar of 3-4 and a bar of 4-4 four, four, and you follow them along, at a certain point they collide because 3 goes into 4, you know, at so and so like 12 beats or 15 beats. So it sounds really complicated but yeah, that's, okay. that's, that's okay. the side of that band which really drew us in and that album we all agree that that's probably one of the, one of the albums that we would, we would wear as a badge, you know, in terms of what influenced our current sound, definitely. Animal Collective. Animal Collective. Animal collective. Yeah. Their, their singing is really unusual as well. It's kind of, um, it's not like la, 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 la. It's not like, the thing about their singing is you don't know when it starts and when it ends. It just kind of appears, you know. It's oh, really so subtle. like part of the music. Yeah, it's very, it's like ambient singing in mm. a way. So they're, they're a big influence, I reckon. Bands like Pink Floyd, that was sort of what we, that was our first window into music. It was like Pink Floyd and King Crimson and the Moody Blues, bands like that. Have you heard of Brian Eno? We, we always wanted to form a band just because we used to keep in touch with letters and they had drawings in them and there were drawings of like bands <coughs> that we loved in them and so the love of music kind of came from this little correspondence we had. And then, hen I, w I was actually, you know, I'm, into I, Queen. I was a massive Queen fan. I don't say you that. Queen. I, shut up. <laughs> I don't actually say that a lot, but I am a big Queen fan. And I hate to say it, it's corny, but David Bowie is yeah. quite a big influence on us actually yeah. as well. And um, because, of, because of his chameleon-like qualities, mm. his ability to reinvent himself, 
We're not actually listening to all that stuff now. Right now we're listening to very contemporary stuff like Coco Rosie and Arctic Monkeys and Anthony the Johnsons and Patrick Arctic Wolf Fire. And Sol and Williams. If you've got ten minutes I can list even more. Yeah. We we like bands that are very, have a very strong direction like Block Party and Future Heads. It's a distinct sound. And you know, Future Heads do a lot of harmonies, they do a lot of vocal stuff. And when when I first heard their album, I thought, oh my god, they're doing what we love doing better than us. So it actually made us sharpen our act up. Yeah, nothing like a vocal harmony. Yeah, exactly. It? Because it's the most challenging thing is to get two yeah. or three voices working Absolutely. in harmony. It's just like business, you know, and they do it incredibly well. So we can learn a lot, and then the, the, the playoff of the two guitars on, on, on Block Party is incredible. Yeah, yeah. It, it you know, I envy that because Will's a brilliant guitarist, I'm not so good. And so there are things that you can pick from every band, you know. Yeah, absolutely. And you think, well, I could do that better. <laughs> Yourself. Good. British Sea Power, who are from Brighton, we all, we, um, we, were, you know, we we're big fans of them, and I, like, their first album, I think, is one of the best records I've heard like in the last five years, and um, it was a dream for us. I don't actually know who put us in contact with them, but they were like, oh yeah, do you want to play on our um, club Sea Power tour? And that was amazing because they dressed the stage up, you know, and they like. They used to have this big bear used to run onto the stage and beat up the band members and all that kind of stuff I love. We watched a Led Zeppelin DVD yesterday. It's the most inspirational thing I've ever watched. It just makes you want to become an incredible musician and just play like that. To be able to be so fucking amazing. And also to kind of, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's all about having that balance of being an amazing musician and being amazing life. And often there's kind of a swing from one to the other, but and of getting it and that's 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 the ultimate goal and just like just becoming a much better musician just to be able to write much better music. From little sort of milestones along the way, like you you know, I remember I remember us all getting really excited in the back of a van before we played the Camden Barfly and we're like, This is it guys, we're playing the Camden Barfly on a Saturday night. And like I can't actually like do justice to how excited we were. We were over the moon. It was like, oh my god, we're actually gonna be playing to like you know, 50 or 60 people, that's amazing, you know, we'd only ever play to our friends. And then, you know, like, six months later, we were, we were playing um, the Wedgwood Rooms to, um, you know, like, 500 people for Block Party, and like, that, then suddenly that was like, oh my god, guys, look how far we've come, you know, even if, even if it ends tomorrow, at least we've played here. And then last night, you know, a year on from that, we, we played ourselves to the Wedgwood Rooms, and it's like, you kind of, you almost become a bit blind to, to how far you've come on and it, it almost needs, I don't know, you, you almost need to fall down just to realise and look back up at where you were and think, fuck, you know, I should have been really happy but you're, you're, you're always sort of setting yourself new targets. Half the industry appears to be manufactured by, yeah, by moguls definitely. and, and manipulators yeah. and mm. quite cynical, not very interesting people with all the wrong motives and I think that's, that's a truism. Mm. And so we come from completely the other end of the spectrum where the music's more important than actually, you know, even the way we present ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> but that's become part of the appeal of Mystery Jets, actually, the fact that yeah. we, you know, it's obvious we're nothing like, you know, any of these manufactured bands. Like, I, I'm, I don't really know where our music's going, but I know it's going to weird places, you know, and interesting places, and I think, I think when you hear stuff off the album, I think you'll find it slightly unexpected, you know, and I think that's always going to be coming through in our music. Because it, like, it's not like we're a band with one songwriter or anything. Mm. We're a band with five people who've each got something very strong to say, and that makes for a very fruitful kind of relationship musically. The, the way the band's going, I see it's going more like talking headsy kind of a way at the moment, because that's what we're feeling. But, I mean, things will change after the like, next few years. And we'll go somewhere else. Where are we? What are we doing? It's irrelevant. Why are we doing it? It's irrelevant where we are. We're at a real special place right now. The place is in our hearts, but sometimes we like to show that place with a part of music. We're at Leeds Cockpit. Um, about to do a sound check. Yeah, hello, I'm Ben from uh, Over a Car. Can you tell us a bit about Leeds and what makes Leeds, Leeds a great place? It's um, I like this. it's not far from the uh, the Dales. Plenty of good bands, plenty of good places to eat, and plenty of good shops and stuff. Cool. Honey.
Pour le ballon. Ballon, ballon. Ballon. Ballon, voilà. Carré, on est en train high five here, motherfucker. That's better. Hello. I'm having a. I'm having some lemon sip. I spoiled myself back in 1999 that I would not eat in the past eat tomorrow. But I'm having lemon sip. Oh, damn. Greetings. Contrary to that, we are also in the Torba. What's the name of the Alright, partner, keep on moving, baby. You know what time it is. <laughs> You're keeping the camera on me, so I do more stupid things. My name's Crindley Pumps, otherwise known as Ed. I'm here to see the Mystery Jets in Oxford, and we're supporting them on Thursday in Cardiff. I love them dearly. <laughs> Just going to Brighton. We're not too late at all. Hello. Do you know where Gardner Road is? Gardner Road. It's not these girls. Awesome. Excuse me. Do you know where Gardner Road is? Excuse me. Hello. If you just keep going through the lanes. Yeah. Do you know the lanes? Not really. No. We want to know the lanes. All right, you're gonna have to go. You're gonna have to go. We're gonna have to go. Thank you. Come on a show. I love you. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. I'm Chris, I'm in a band called Les Incompetents. Mr. Jets, amazing. Really if there's an empty iPod, an iPod full of songs, which will be heavier? <laughs> I'm turning the light on now. 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 <laughs> Woo! That was close. <laughs> Bad day for music, a good day for South End. Hello. We're about to start loading. This is Bristol, Louisiana. You can see it's quite small, but it is sold out, and that's what it's all about. Hopefully it's going to go mental, mental, and I can do my first stage dive. Yes. Liam's doing his hairspray that he just bought for food that's why he's late. I guarantee you. Hey, don't touch it! I'm, I'm Morgan, I'm drummer. <laughs> Scott guitarist. <laughs> I'm Tom and I sing. <laughs> oh fuck, I feel stupid now. I'm Ben. Me. <laughs> <laughs> like, usually, like, can't get up a bit. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose we're a bit off the wall at the moment. Energetic, energetic pretty rocking. Yeah, rock and roll. Aggressive. <laughs> Autism with sound. Surprised. <laughs> Fucking amazing. They're just, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's like a bombing party. <laughs> 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 
No, they're still going to be another 50 people. Yeah, that's what I yeah, think it's loads like, and six loads toes. Is it? Oh, oh, we'll we'll loads so are going to be lovely. Like Can't wait to have them with us. Hello! <laughs> 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 I'm in loose. Do you want me to say something? Uh, hello. No pressure, no pressure, right? He had to go. Thank you very much. That was the Mr. Jets with the boy who ran away. We have been on tour like for about a month now. We've got about another week, another ten days. No, it's been good. It's been up and down. I don't know. There's not that many negative things. Like, I guess when you're travelling in a bus, you get on top of each other a lot. I think the crew. It's probably the hardest part of being on tour, like being on the bus together, because like you know, you know the band really well. Like being in rehearsals and stuff, you 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 don't have any walls. Um, I don't like missing, you know, your loved ones. I really, really don't like that. It's really annoying when everything's laid out for you on a plate. Like the sound is good and everyone's happy and the room is totally full and everyone seems to know the songs, but there's one thing missing and you don't know what it is and you just can't enjoy it. You know, it's like not enjoying your own birthday party tired when you get too drunk and then you get very tired and uh, traveling just because you're out but um, the gigs keep you going the live gigs the love of the music the drugs ah! I hate paranoia like you know sometimes you sort of you've got a fixed idea in your head about you know maybe someone feels a certain way towards you or like I don't know um, you feel a certain way towards someone else and then everything that happens all around you all day long like you're just taking these different things and you're fitting it into that like into that kind of um, equation uh, I think I'm close to everyone in different ways it's very much like a group a community and it? it's not about one person or the other it's just all of us together I used to find Henry intimidating at first I don't know why he's like a nice gentle dude but I used to get, I used to find it really intimidating. No, I'm close to everyone in different ways. Everyone, you go to like everyone for a different type of thing. Will, when he's in a good mood, I really, I really like to see him. <laughs> Everyone's lovely in their annoying little ways. Yeah, no, actually, I'm hiding something. Will and I fell out. Like I had a massive argument with Henry earlier on the tour. And it was because our managers were there and like, I was just tired and over overblowing everything and I think he felt similar to the, 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 the disagreement that Will and I had was about whether On a Trembling Day had a, a proper legitimate place on the album. It was meant to be about Trembling Day but what it ended up being about was me trying to hurt him. No, I don't, I'm not going to repeat what he said actually, you have to ask him. Well, it, it finished by us not talking to each other for about two days. And then of all people, Rob, the bus driver, um, solved the problem by actually saying to Will. Will, if you're man enough, just look him in the eye and apologise. For Christ's sake, you know, the tour isn't going well, just fucking look him in the eyes and apologise. But it's all over now, and you know, we're great friends again. I get arguments about seeing where someone else is standing from, and about them seeing where you're standing from. And then about walking around and looking at each other and going, okay, you know. It's easy, it's easy on tours to like slip into this kind of tired and a bit ill and, and, and a bit grumpy with everyone, but it hasn't happened this tour and everyone's kind of really made efforts throughout the whole tour and that makes such a difference. Like if people are making efforts then um, the whole thing rolls really smooth and it's really enjoyable. I love it when everyone's in a good mood, you know, and we all give each other room to be ourselves fully, you know. And then, and then, and then, when that feeling happens, like the world is kind of your oyster, you know. You can kind of because when there's five of you in the band and you're all strong, you know, then you can all do whatever you want, you know, together. And that's when it's a kind of family, and you trust each other to 
to do the best at what each does, you know. And you can you, you you're safe in the knowledge that everyone's doing their very best, you know. I love that feeling. Those are when the gigs are great, I think. Before you go on stage, you have to make the band feel really confident. And you, and even like we did a radio session the other day next to FM, and the rest of the guys were freaking out, and I was in a different room, so I couldn't really put my kind of thing. But they were freaking out, and they were like, "Oh my god, like, oh, it's not sounding tight." And everyone was like, kind of like worried, and I just came in. I was like, "Look, it doesn't fucking matter. We're a rock band. We're gonna have to rock out and just enjoy it. If you don't enjoy it, it's not gonna sound like we're enjoying it. You gotta, you gotta feel the music and then play it. You sound like a hippie, but yeah." For the heroin or something, aren't they? Waiting for that There's fix. There's like a wizard behind that. Is that? Yeah, yeah. with a massive beard. Have a look. <laughs> Leave them be. Those doggies love their master. Uh, look at them, <coughs> look at them kiss. Look at this. Wearing. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. Do nothing but get in trouble, you are. He's very right. What a long road it's been. My old and trusted friend. <laughs> You're gonna be famous then. I don't know about that. Who knows? 
Have you guys heard that the Mystery Jet formed on an audition for X Factor? Oh my god. Are you serious? Yes, oh I'm god. absolutely serious. What do you think you would have done uh, if you come to the, the X Factor? I oh, want that pop thing. Yes. I'd never do that. I've not been in here. I do watch the X Factor, and I'm very, very surprised. <laughs> Don't tell them I told you, they'll actually kill me. I won't, I won't ever mention it ever. You're, You're on your own. Yeah, no, 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 no. You'll do it again. You'll do it again. Okay, we'll do it by yourself. Two, one, two, three. You can do anything you want as long as it makes sense. Hey, that's not in time. All right. Here's the other one, one, two, three, four. You can do anything you want as long as it makes sense. You can do anything you want as long. He's like, he was standing over there. Where is he? Yeah, yeah. Can you put your hand up? Put your hand up if you look like Vince Noir. <laughs> I am Vince Noir, you idiots. No, the other guy. <laughs> this is Bullsara. Right. Should we get out? Let's get you on. Yeah. It looks like a teenager's room. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a teenager room. <laughs> What's the story behind this picture? Is that really who it says it is? No. Where did you get this? <laughs> I, think we'll get it. I, I thought we destroyed it. all of them. That's, that's not me and Kabil. That's yeah, like that, like gets white that. And then yeah, yeah. that was the that first incarnation of Mystery Jets <laughs> in France. Where's Kabil? Oh, I was in France. <laughs> that's that's in was France. The, that was like the. Our first proper session, I think. <laughs> this, like, yeah. Were you in it? <laughs> no, I wasn't. No, that was that was back in the day. This was actually on my tenth birthday, so it would have been nineteen ninety-five. Yeah, William's actually half the size of Henry. <laughs> He's actually like comes up to Henry's waist. You go in the big room. Yeah. It just gets yeah, a little cramped in here. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> 
obviously we, this is like the headquarters. This is where you know this the, is where we sign our contracts. Do you know what the best bit is? You see this window, what is it? What is it? It's a mystery chip. Oh my god! We actually, we actually wanted to paint out a big question mark in the middle. This is where we recorded Drowning Not Waving. Right, which is the B side to, um, to On My Feet, which, which is a kind of C ditty kind of shanty, kind of with like a Brazilian bass solo underneath. Oh, yeah, totally. yeah. For people who haven't been to the island, what is it? What is the ambience of the island? You've got the church bells, which ring, and in fact they're on the island as well. Um, and down there, people are just pottering away all day, just hammering on their boats. And you've got tin bashes, boat builders. And, and there you've got like industrial noise industrial. coming from that place the whole day long, yeah. which we sampled a lot. But why was that important to get the, those sounds and those... For me personally, for our first album, it only feels right that it's like a culmination of, of all those things, of where we have rehearsed. And I'm sure part of the reason why we've evolved in a certain way has been because we've rehearsed yeah. on I think we owe a lot actually to this planet. Yeah. <laughs> and we do all our artwork here. We'll show you the models later. So, why do you want to explain it? Well, it's, it's, all, it's just about all the little pie gigs and they escalate and escalate and escalate and from like 10 people to 50 people to 200 to 400 to like maybe like 600. I mean, we don't even know how many exactly we get. And it's just because you could only fit like two to three hundred in that in our rehearsal space. Yeah, and that's everyone spilled out. Literally, there were people everywhere yeah, under yeah. their boathouse. And people started going on like other people's land. And <coughs> there was moments when people started going on boats. And then the last time, there was what the environmental health came down. You, you guys kind of strike me as a kind of strangely or well, very English kind of band. Do you think this hit? Am I kind of right in saying that? In that kind of. Um, tradition of English psychedelic. Psychedelic music was definitely a, a, a very big um, kind of influence in the early days. I mean, I, I listened to more, more classical music than anything up until I was about 14. So I didn't really, play the bass till he was in the band, yeah. he was always a cello. I played the cello and I just, I was lying, I, I just listened to like Mozart and I just keep, that's all I kind of, I kind of knew. You've got, Mel, you've got Mel C's first huh? solo album as well, can't <laughs> we spoke about that, was that, one one my, that was one of my ex-girlfriends, you know, she left it at my house type thing. No, she didn't buy it. Was 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 a I was a huge my spice girl. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love them. I saw them at Wembley Arena. I was in love with Baby Spice. This was like pretty much the first one. This was like the prototype. Um, this was actually before we even started making it for songs, but it's about, it's actually about a Pink Floyd song. Uh, this little shed here is where we started making music in Oxford. And it's got a little sign on it. It's in French sign. Sorty, yeah, exit. It's electric fires. It's, it's the B fires. side of our Agnes. Making gems, that's really that's really what we've sort of missed out so far in this conversation. Like, that is what the album's called because that is what we've tried to um, but I think that's what we that's how we've tried to assemble all the material. If the album was something physical, then I think it'd be like a hut somewhere that people can just like slip away into. And whatever whatever's in their head can appear on the walls of the hut, <coughs> and it's and got they can live out. It's got like ten boxes in the hut, and each one. And there's there's like there's, there's memories that you're not sure if they actually exist in there. And there's there's things you can't really put your finger on. And I'm not saying that's true or whatever, but that's what I want from it. That's what if 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 that's achieved, then I think we've accomplished something. Yeah, I'm just using it. Yeah. How you doing? Is it okay? Is it okay? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, now, and I was walking up behind you and I felt, like, first off, I felt, is that scruffy guy there? And I thought, kind of looks familiar. Yeah. I would do. Cool, nice. Nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you. What do the mystery jets mean to you? Quite a lot, actually. Good they, they, yeah, <laughs> but they like sum up a lot of our teenage years. Because I mean, well, seriously, for the past like year, we've seen them about eight times. Yeah. Yeah, I saw them when they support Future Heads at Oxford Uni. I went up to see Future Heads, and they were there. And then I like joined the Melanists and stuff. And then when I heard they were here, nothing brilliant. I'm Emma. I'm in Portsmouth to see the Mystery Jets and Rival Jousters. Come see the Mystery Jets. Um, I'm going to go and see them in Reading again and probably in London as well. I've seen them like six times, I think. Uh, I was at Reading Festival and I went to the 
Carling stage to see the Arctic Monkeys. But the first person I saw was the Mystery Jets, and I was completely blown away by them. Can you move out to the way, please? Either go in or come out. Thank you. Analysis, yeah. Yeah, wicked. Nice oh, seeing you again. I can't wait to play. It's like he's one of the debut because he had two times. I've got both of my chest. I'll come to you all here for the lead. <laughs> pretty good as well. Yeah. Always happens to us, people come for the support bands. So. Oh, no. It's kind of like scary. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, three times. Think about the eel pie parties. It was amazing. It was so good. <laughs> the first one was the best, and then the last yeah. one, all the enemy photographers turned up and like stood in front, stood of, in front of us, so you can see. see. How did you find out about this chest? Um, we found we they found support the, block party, yeah. you know, and then they played it in his garage. My garage. Oh yeah, they played your garage. Yeah. yeah. Basically, <laughs> the mystery guests weren't coming to Portsmouth in their tour and they said that they'd do a bedroom, bedroom gig. So I opened my garage. What's your name? Lossa. Lossa, are you Lossa? Lossa, I like all of them equally. Oh, Kai. <laughs> or William, he's really sweet. Or Kapil, he's just, just, just name all of them. Yeah. Yeah. Or, Blaine. or Henry. Or Blaine. Or Blaine. Oh. Either really, I'm not, I'm not that fussed. <laughs> We love them, we love William! Yeah, we love William! The one on the like crazy instrument was quite nice. No, the I'm sorry, the bassist. Uh, it was so good. <laughs> I don't know, they're all, all of them a bit kind of like, well, they're legends really. <laughs> Let's face it. Uh, William! Come over here, come over here! We've just killed oh, Esther, I love you! Oh, smile! Jimmy's got a very, very young... Uh, I'm too early on sorry. He's leading into the ice cream! You have one, you can take it outside! And we are at the Louisiana in Bristol. Come back to Exeter, and if not, then I'll travel because it's fucking brilliant. The gig was absolutely sterling. Well done, boys. Nice one. Sex! It was sex! sex! It was sex. Sweaty, but fantastic. Uh, at 43 years of age and a veteran of many a gig, uh, I thoroughly enjoyed that one. So I never felt as excited about anything about a keeper's life. We think they're really good, and my dad gives you his regards. <laughs> and how does he like your curry? Yeah, it's curry. Can we do that again? <laughs> what do you mean? They, th they think you're under 25. just always got red eyes. My face is. Maybe he actually has red eyes. Maybe he's, he's a, a devil. He's actually a, a rat. No, he's a he's a he's a. That's it. He's, he's a rat. A rat. I think Will likes me. I like him. There's been so many amazing moments. I think maybe one of the best gigs was when we played um, the Wedgwood Rooms in Portsmouth because the two support bands there were brilliant as well. It was Rival Jousters and Ludes, both of whom really good friends. And there was loads of crowd surfing. It was like, I think, the third gig we crowd surfing at, and it was packed out. It was wicked. Look at that.
There seems to be a real following in Portsmouth, absolutely amazing following there. And you know, the place was pretty full, and the support you feel this incredible um, reaction from the audience, which just, just you can ride on it, it's incredible. It's been the best tour yet, and it's it's great to see things moving forward. I think we kind of, for the last kind of year and a half, we've just been non stop like recording and touring and just doing everything we can to, to, to get out there and I think it's finally paying off so it's great. I think more than anything I just want to like get back, get back maybe into having a bit of a routine. I'm gonna go to Paris and uh, eat soft cheese in bed all day. <laughs> I'm gonna go to Paris and just chill out and then uh, we've got to do so we've got to do the artwork for the album and that's long and that's a lot of stuff. Um, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna branch out and I wanna reach the masses because I find there's not a lot there's not a lot of like there's only me at the Indie Hindi King. So I need my Indie Hindi like Kareem of bitches and he's like my Indie Hindi um, associates. But hopefully I'll, I'll you know I'll lead the way. I wanna get there. I wanna get an eight track recorder. Start making some recordings. Start experimenting. Um, I want to listen to as much music as I can. I want to get become a better guitar player. I want to read about a hundred books as well. So, like, lots of things. Just the, the things I always want to do, which is like always do art, always practice, always listen to music, always have things on the go. And Christmas is hopefully going to be a small pocket of time for me to try and do that. You know. So. But those are the things I always want to do, you know. So I'll be saying that at the end of the next tour. You know. I'm working on my hairy chest and uh, my hairy back and my hairy ass. Um, so it's getting there. Eventually, I think I'll give it two more weeks and I'll be like full fledged, like Hindi Hindi, getting a medallion, a leather jacket, big black shades. My hair, I'm growing my hair, as you can see in the beard. Like so I'm gonna have like a big mullet and then some tight leather jeans, leather trousers. I'll be there. I'll be there. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. I mean, I'm looking forward to the London gig. Like, that is just that really excites me. You know, because it's our night, and there's going to be 700 or 600 people coming, and it's like they're coming to see us, and that is an amazing thing. You know, it's just it feels like it makes everything feel worthwhile when that happens. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. I can't wait. Whatever you're doing, you've got to set your, your sights at the highest possible, and that's that's what we want to do. We want to be the sound of something. We want to be something that, when people listen to our music, it reminds them of a whole decade, <laughs> and not just a moment in their life, but a whole decade. That's pretty. That's pretty amazing. Touring isn't normal life. It's a kind of. It's a different time zone. It's amazing, but it's like it's kind of a dream. It's very dreamlike. Funny enough, I was actually I had a dream last night where I wasn't in the band any longer, and it was it was horrendous. It was horrendous. Um, and I woke up and I went, oh my god, thank god that isn't that isn't real. If I if I went and saw us play, and I was an audience, I'd be so pissed off that I was not in that band. I'd be so pissed off. So it would definitely be like this band, this band like right here. If you had to sum up the Mystery Jets in one word, what would you say? Forever. Oh. It's just the first thing that came to my mind. Cheesy. But, yeah, forever. It's, it's something so strong. Yeah. Or what, what Mystery Jets stand for forever, you know. Definitely. Thanks a lot. This, I think this is our last song. Uh, it's our last gig this year as well. Any, any suggestions, anybody? Agnes! Agnes! What's Agnes? Who's Agnes? Does anybody want any water? We've done like 100 gigs this year. And this is easily the best. Um, this is for Milo and Sam wherever they may be, but I, I didn't think we'd ever play to this many people, like ever, so it's an amazing privilege. But thank you. It's emotional, yeah?
Hey! Go on, get out of it. Mystery jets, never heard of them. Go on, fuck off out of it. You won't get penny one from me, you slags.